Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 236. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow Game, Jay Massey. All right. How are you guys doing? Happy New Year. We are now in to another year. Um, here's a question. H- how are you going to make this year be different than last year or any of the last years that you've had? Uh, I often hear it said, and maybe you've said it, you know, people say things like, hey, I've got 20 years of experience, 15 years of experience. I've been working here for 30 years. Well, OK, that's wonderful. But I really think most of the time when people say that, what they really mean is that they've got they've had the same year and just repeated it 10, 20, 30 times. Uh, they actually don't have any sort of different experiences in between. And it's one of those things that I, I, I want different experiences in between. And each and every year has been that very thing in so many different ways, in so many different ways. Now, I, I don't know where you sit, stand, squat or whatever on these matters as it relates to making New Year's resolutions. It's not actually something that I'm all that up on personally, (laughs) you know. Uh, I I don't want to wait 365 days to actually say, hey, this is something I want to cut out of my life or something I want to strive towards. However, uh, if you need an excuse, the New Year is a great time. Any time is just as good. But if you want to capitalize on that energy that everyone else is doing, I think it's not such a bad thing. However, with that being said, oftentimes I think the things that we have resolutions about are at best incomplete. You know, uh, they're they're at best incomplete. They focus on things that we should do or not do. um, And that's wonderful. You know, some of us are we're thinking, you know what, we, we really should spend uh, more time with friends and family, or we really should make sure that we call mom at least once a week or probably more frequently. This is something I should do or or something I shouldn't do. I I shouldn't uh, continue. I should quit smoking. I should uh, quit eating 12 desserts uh, a week. (laughs) You know, I'm being facetious in some cases, right? Uh, But if you do eat 12 desserts, I hope they're really good. And at the end of the day, I think that way of thinking is at best, as I said, incomplete. It's at best incomplete to actually help us to get to our goal. We're we're focused so much on the things that we do. And if you're like me, it's it's rare that you are consistent in anything that you do. I mean, there's a reason that certain bodily functions like breathing are involuntary responses, because I think we wouldn't even be consistent with that if it was any other way. So, uh, here's my point. Here's here's what I'm saying. What we're going to talk about uh, this month, we're going to talk about specifically eight things to give up. But I think we're going to talk about eight things to give up that are going to help you not only this year, but every year from this point forward that will help you to have a different year every year so that you can truly quit repeating the the same here over and over and over. It was inspired by a post that I found or a picture that I found and posted on the on the Facebook wall at uh, you know Cashflow Diary Facebook wall. And every time it's been posted, it it gets lots of you know engagement and shares, and it, and it seems to resonate with a number of individuals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the eight things that this post recommends that we give up, and then over. You know, starting with this episode and and over the rest of this particular month, we're going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts on these same eight things. So the the eight things to give up in no particular order are doubting yourself, 
negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and people-pleasing. Again, those are the eight things to give up. Doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and people-pleasing. So what does that mean? That means you've got to listen to all eight episodes if you want to get all the good stuff. And we're going to start with doubting yourself. Here's a question. What have you ever gained? What progress have you ever made? Well, by doubting yourself. I mean, by doubting yourself, have you ever, you know, written an offer on a property? Have you ever asked a a person out on a date because you were doubting yourself? As a result of doubting yourself, have you asked a person to invest? Or have you done anything that had the potential to move you forward? Have you traveled? Have you have you even asked for a raise because you doubted yourself? What have you gained ever? Please think about this. Is there anything positive that has come from you doubting yourself? If so, please send me an email. Let me know what that is because I I would like to know. Here's an interesting comment. Fear kills more dreams than failure ever will. I looked up the definition of doubt, and it it has uh, two. Uh, One as a noun. It's a feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. And then as a verb, it's to feel uncertain about or fear or be afraid of. So you're uncertain about yourself. I get uncertain about myself too. Here's an interesting thing. I don't think it's effective to focus on the what we were doubting in that sense. The question is, is so why on earth, if, if it's so ineffective, it's, if it has no value, why do we do it? You know, I, I can't speak for you, even though I might try <laughs> from time to time. I, I can't speak for you. I know for myself, it's it's a failure at times to actually understand how to process an emotion and then interpret an appropriate related action. So here, here's what I mean. You're confronted with something, I'm confronted with something, and we go, I'm afraid. Now, to that emotion is something that we're familiar with, right? And then we make a, a either subconscious or conscious decision somewhere in there. We go, being afraid isn't okay. So it puts us in this not okay state. And no one likes to feel uneasy or not okay. And then we're like, oh, I need to get out of this okay, not okay state. So what does that mean I, I'm going to do? We start doubting and we then interpret the action as well. That means, I know, I won't pursue what it is that's causing this fear. That'll get me back to safety. So it means stand still and be safe. Even though logically we're thinking, man, I I would like to move forward, but I'm afraid. Afraid isn't isn't okay. So you know what? Maybe I don't really, you know what? I I don't really want that. I, I really don't. So I'll just stay here and be safe. And that's the quickest path to repeating the exact same year you just had. Here's another way of looking at it. You could be afraid. Now, notice the emotion is the same. It's not like anyone that you admire, respect, what have you. They have the same emotions. However, during this chain of events, there's a change. Instead of instantly making the judgment, being afraid is not okay, it becomes, you know, afraid is an emotion that everyone feels. It's an acknowledgement. You know what? Everyone feels afraid. That's not anything abnormal. That's not anything new. 
So where the challenge and change begins to occur is you start to ask yourself this question. What would I rather feel? Or who would I rather be? Would I rather be afraid? Would I rather be in this afraid state? What would I rather feel? Would I rather feel joy, excitement, um, exhilaration, anything? Because both individuals are seeking an exit from the same emotion. And then usually when you ask yourself that question, especially the who would I rather be, you can put yourself in an empowering decision to say things like or think things like, you know what, I will choose to develop courage. Interesting. It doesn't mean fear has dissipated. It's not gone. You can't really eliminate it, but you can choose to develop courage. And because of that choice to develop courage, what ends up happening is that you move forward and grow stronger. You start facing the very thing that you were afraid of, because that's usually what's required from moving forward. Not ignoring it, not pretending it doesn't exist, not trying to psych yourself out and going, okay, that danger really isn't there. Oh, it's there. However, I'm choosing to move forward anyway. It's just a difference in asking a few questions and acknowledging that that emotion is very valid, especially at the moment you're feeling it. You're feeling it for a reason. Trying to get rid of it, it's kind of useless. So when are you likely to feel this next? Because see, one of the things that I've learned uh, for, for myself that I believe is true for many of us is if we take the time to recognize uh, triggering events or events that cause us to feel or have the propensity to put us in this emotional state or in any state that we don't want to be in, we can begin to set up safeguards. We can begin to be, become more aware. Therefore, we are not caught unprepared because I think that's what happens a lot. We get caught unprepared. We haven't decided ahead of time, here's the person I am going to be when X, Y, Z occurs, and this is what that type of person would do. So when we are emotionally sober in a normal state of mind, we need to figure out what that triggering event is, and more importantly, how are we going to respond the next time this occurs? See, I I think we all feel this when we're faced with the opportunity to become someone of more value than you currently see yourself providing. So maybe right now you're, you know, sitting in the cubicle or you're on your way to work, you're listening to this and you're like, man, vacation and holiday is over. It's back to work. But before too long, you're going to be presented with an opportunity that sounds better than your current existence. And you're going to go, hmm. And it's usually in that moment when we are faced with an opportunity to become someone of more value than we are currently providing that these doubts arise and surface. I know you can say and we say things like, you know what? I don't know if that's me or I don't know if I have the ability to do that or any number of things. Well, here's the interesting thing. You don't have the ability to do it. You don't know, but that's okay. Go find out. Go give yourself an opportunity to try to see. Maybe you can actually stick to an exercise regimen. Maybe you can actually say, you know what? I am going to submit five offers a week no matter what if it kills me. Maybe you can, you know, I'm going to spend 20 minutes a day with each one of my children no matter what. And I'm going to figure out my schedule to make that happen. Maybe those things are possible. Just put it in the calendar and figure it out. See what happens. But the moment you are faced with that opportunity, like I said, to become someone of more value than you currently see yourself providing, that's usually when it comes up. Another popular example, especially right now, is you know you want to earn more money. 
Well, in order to receive more, you must give more. And as it relates to real estate, you must be willing to help others out of their situation by caring, by listening, and developing a solution that's profitable. You have to give time, effort, and energy to understanding what's going on with someone else. So they might, so that you might perhaps win them over to be willing to do business with you. And here's the rub. Not everyone is going to be willing. And the painful part is that some of you, you're going to quit before you've actually given yourself a shot. And that's unfortunate. But that's just part of the process. That's part of the process that separates those who actually end up buying property this year, this month, this week, those who buy their next units, those who get up and try again from those who don't and only sit back and dream about it. That'll be because, you know, giving and not receiving hurts. This is true. I hear you. But you know what? That's not a legitimate reason to doubt yourself. So another way this is going to happen for you is that you've heard me say or you're going to have that thought, hey, I should write an offer. And you've heard me say that more than once. Move at the speed of instruction, right? You feel very excited and afraid at the same time. And that's part of the problem. This mass confusion begins to happen. But at least now, maybe you'll expect those emotions and they won't catch you off guard and you won't instantly flee the scene of your future self. You'll actually stick around and go, okay, I knew I was going to feel this way. I knew this was coming. Here's what I said I was going to do. I was going to become a brave person. I was going to become the hero that my family is waiting on. I was going to become more than my present place and do this anyway. And then just take one step one measurable step, one measurable, quantifiable, observable step towards it. If you're going to write an offer, go get the contract. If you've you've already got the contract, fill it out. Call somebody and ask them. Make that move. I promise that making that one move won't kill you, but it will grow you faster than you thought was possible. So what's really the solution here? Oh, I've got a unique exercise that I'm going to share with you in just a moment. However, mentally, what I think that needs to happen is that you just focus on the outcome you actually desire. In other words, you take that doubtful thought captive and replace it with more positive ones. You're like, Jay, I I don't know where I'm going to get a positive thought in the spur of the moment. And I totally understand because when we are gripped, seized, arrested by these emotions, (laughs) intelligence goes straight out the window. Can't remember anything positive about ourselves or anything that we've ever done. So, just like I suggested earlier, we're going to do a little bit of pre-planning because we know this emotion is coming. So we might as well be ready for it. And here's what you can do. It's a very simple exercise. And I want you to do it starting today. In fact, I'm going to get you to step out on faith and say out loud, I'm going to do this. And mean it and follow through. Even though you don't know what it is, I'm wanting you to make the commitment. I promise you, if you make the commitment without knowing what it is first, It'll help you that much more. It'll also tell you, do I really believe that Jay is going to be helping me? Because there's the test. Now, either way, whether you're able to put yourself in that space, it's like, okay, I'm doing this. I don't care what it is. I know it scares me, but I don't care. If you can do that, you're well on your way. And if you can't, that's okay. It just now illustrates another place where growth is required. Either way, I still want you to do it. So, did you say it yet? I'm gonna do this. No matter what it takes, no matter what it is, no matter how scary, and I'm going to start today. 
those are the words. All right, so here's what I'm going to tell you. It's really, really simple. All I want you to do is to begin to keep a small success journal. You're only going to answer one question. And so long as you answer this one question every day, you will inoculate yourself from your own doubtful thoughts. You ready? Simply fill in the following blank. Today, five reasons I am successful are. That's it. Today, five reasons I am successful are. Sometimes that could be I hugged my wife. I remembered to call my mom. I stood up. I brushed my teeth. I drove to work and I got there on time. I did actually read a book today. I finished a book. I started a book. I made progress inside the book. I accomplished getting that offer submitted. I made that phone call to the seller, even though I was nervous and afraid and I didn't know what I was going to offer them or what I could yet. Fine. Pick any of those things. It doesn't matter. Today, five reasons I am successful are answer it every day. Put it in a journal. Handwritten or typed. Put it on your iPhone, iPad. I don't really care. I just care that you do the exercise. Because see, the next time, and there will be a next time, you have doubtful thoughts. You'll be armed. You'll be ready with your own words telling you why you can succeed. They won't be mine. They'll be yours. And with that, you will be empowered to overcome. And well, you'll finally have a way to be prepared and have a different year than the one you had last time. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.